now some two certain external lipid association in that guidelines also we are following because it is more or less same. ACCH guideline was published in 2018 and after that this two guidelines has already come 2019 ESC guideline and 2020 uh, lipid association of it. Recently NICE also has given guidelines on 2023 but there are no major changes in their guidelines. So this was the study which was discussed most and which started discussion on dyslipidemia that is the inter-heart study which gave us modifiable risk factor for first myocardial infarction and that is current smoking, diabetes, hypertension, abdominal obesity, psychosocial index and apo a1 ratio. So apoB a1 ratio of more than one is in favor of patient developing cardiovascular disease. So it means that apoB is a bad cholesterol. That also we'll discuss in time. And this is a statement, common statement. 18 mg per deciliter LDL reduction leads to reduced mass rate by 22 percent. So that should be the first. Yes, according to this slide, one should take alcohol. Yes, according to this slide, yes. But now, but now that 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 is, is, even a single is
stop this NDL receptors or upgrade this NDL receptors so that extra NDL can be taken up by the liver. That is done by statin, pampadoic acid, and PCS can either have some complex intervention, uh, complex interaction inside liver that we will see in subsequent slides when we will discuss about PCS can either. Will dietary fat will affect the level directly, directly. Dietary fat will affect directly triglyceride levels, not this LDL, IDL, or VLDL levels. Directly it is associated with triglycerides. So, apoB containing lipoproteins, as we have discussed, are chylomicrons, VLDL, IDL, LDL. So, this brings us to the concept of non HDL cholesterol. HDL does not contain apoB100. And for say FOB100 is harmful to all arterial or vascular system. So as per simple calculation, total cholesterol minus HDL is non-HDL cholesterol. Non-HDL cholesterol contains all of this. So that is our secondary target in majority of guidelines. First target is LDL, second target is non-HDL cholesterol. And nowadays recently third target is also coming up that is FOB and lipoprotein. Not much discussed in uh, guidelines, but yes, it is there. So, this brings us to first question Does high triglyceride is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease? Yes, triglyceride also is FOB and it is a high risk for factor for cardiovascular disease to a certain extent, independent of total cholesterol levels. So, when should we treat? That is again subdivided into two parts what is primary prevention and what is secondary prevention? Secondary prevention is very simple. That is, after any atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, patient needs secondary prevention for prescription. What is to be discussed in detail is primary prevention, and there are multiple guidelines. All guidelines are driven by some or other scope. So, European guidelines is mainly driven by this systematic coronary risk estimation that is scored, and nowadays again newer version is also available scored through. Other risk factor uh, assessment system that Framingham model. Q risk, ProCam, Renault, QR, but not very famous. Four is easy to calculate and it is easy to apply to linear practice. It can be calculated on hardscore.org and it involves parameters like age, gender, systolic blood pressure, total cholesterol level, HDL level, history of smoking, and this. So, this is a high risk region of Europe chart which gives a score value depending on the total cholesterol level, systolic BP, gender, smoker and not smoker. So, say this, this person who is male, age 60 years, is in non-smoker group, systolic BP of 120 and total cholesterol of 72, uh, 72 mg per deciliter. That comes into category now number 4 and the total risk for 10 years is 3 to 4 percent. If we compare this with this person, gender is same, total cholesterol remains same. What has changed? Age group, younger age group, but he is smoker and his blood pressure is 180. Risk remains same. So although he is younger, with same amount of cholesterol, but because of smoking and blood pressure, his risk is as equal as the person with the age of 60 years. So all parameters are important, not only total cholesterol. We have to see patient in general, what is smoking, age, gender, everything. Even this chart does not include diabetes, but diabetes per se makes any person into a high risk category. What is the number of the ratio? 80, 1, 8, 4 into 18, 18. yeah, 4 multiplied by 18, 7. I think these are all Western literature, but uh, in our country, smoking is equivalent to tobacco tree. Yes, it's equivalent. Tob smoking is tobacco in any form. Any form. Okay. So, what to do and what not to do, this is given by ESC 2019. Total risk estimation should be done in patients aged less than, uh, more than 40 years of age without evidence of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, CKD, familial hypercholesterolemia or LDL more than 190. So, 
in patient with cardiovascular disease. If you hear multiply by eighty, then it will become ninety. Yeah. 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 We are four point nine. I'll find out. I'll message. Because. No, no, no. Conversion. Conversion from minimal to. ना पर पहलू खाली टोटल कोलेस्ट्रॉल को ना एलडीएल को जो है एलडीएल जो परसों जो मॉलेक्युलर वेट चेंज थे क्या एलडीएल से सो एनी परसेंट विथ कार्डियोवास्कुलर डिजीज डायबिटीज सीकेडी फेमिनल हाइपरकोलेस्ट्रॉल में एलडीएल मोर देन 190 एनी परसेंट नो विदाउट टू फॉर दिस परसन नो नीड टू गो फॉर एनी रिस्क एस्टीमेशन दे आर ऑलरेडी इनटू हाईएस तो रिस्क एस्टीमेशन रिक्वायर फॉर पर्सन 210 के तो 190 है पर मिनट अपने लास्ट वीक डिस्कस था पर मिनट सो रिस्क एस्टीमेशन इज रिक्वायर फॉर एनी पर्सन हु डज नॉट हैव दिस रिस्क फैक्टर्स एंड हु आर एज एंड मोर देन 40 इयर्स बिलो 40 इयर्स अगेन रिस्क एस्टीमेशन इज डिफरेंट नॉट विद दिस कोर्स सो हियर दे अगेन माय पॉइंट इज हियर अगेन हियर पेशेंट इज नॉट हैविंग डायबिटीज is a metabolic syndrome is a pre diabetes and ldl just 161 70 so now this this doesn't fit into primary but still is high is he is at high is at high so there are some criteria yeah, that you what you know okay, why i am telling you that is a dynamic thing yes so these are what they thought five years back you know? yes so there are criteria for that given by acc as not by esc But it is that. And I am just saying, update for the end of 2020. ESC, ECCH, 2020. ECCH is 2018 and 2019, and uh, this is 2019-2020 <laughs> Lipid Association of India 2023 Nice guidelines. The 2020 update is by CCS, and there is nothing major changes in that. The second class one recommendation is high and very high risk individuals may be identified on the basis of. Documented cardiovascular disease, diabetes, moderate to severe renal disease, familial hypercholesterol, and high score risk. That is all more or less same. So for this person, we don't go for risk calculation, and we directly go for statin therapy. For others, we go for risk calculation by score, and then go for statin therapy accordingly. Comparing this with ACCA guidelines, which was published a year earlier in 2018, again it is same. LDL more than 190. Directly start with high intensity statin. Patient with diabetes mellitus, year in 40 to 70. Regardless of age. Regardless of age. Regardless of age. Even patient is in 20s. Yes. Right. LDL more than 190 uh, requires treatment yes. and preferably high intensity statin. Diabetes mellitus 40 to 75 years, moderate intensity class one. If you want to go for high intensity. Okay. Risk assessment and discussion with patient regarding side effects and further intervention is necessary. Age more than 75, clinical assessment is definitely necessary. We can't give them uh, any statin blindly. About other groups, age zero to 20, first lifestyle recommendation is to be given to prevent or reduce atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, and only and only diagnosed. Cases of familial hypercholesterolemia make them prone to have statin for treatment. Age between 20 to 40 years, estimate again lifetime risk with ACVD score. Consider statin in family history or premature atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or LDL more than 160. 40 to 75 years without diabetes mellitus. 10 year risk estimation is necessary if it is less than 5% patient is in low risk group risk discussion is emphasized to improve lifestyle to improve dietary modifications if patient comes in more borderline or intermediate risk group again risk estimation is needed and moderate intensity statin to be start target is to reduce LDL cholesterol by 30 to 50% which is class 1 risk If patient comes in high risk, that is more than 20% 10 years old, initiate statin to reduce LDL cholesterol by more than 50%. And about grey zone, where risk estimation cannot be done, like in your case, what can help us is coronary artery calcium score, where risk estimation is not 
of India 2016. Again, it is divided into more or less same category, low risk, moderate, high, very risk, high risk. We will not discuss this because this guideline has not been updated in 2020. And it has added two more subgroups. Extreme risk group, again divided into category A and B. Here target is little bit even less, somewhere around 30. For category B, coronary artery disease with more than one feature of very high risk. What is very high risk group is this? Very high risk group is pre-existing atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Diabetes with more than two other major atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk factors or familial homozygous hypercholesterol. This makes patient into extreme high risk group category. Majority of our patients who have pre-existing atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease who have diabetes with more than two risk factors like this age more than 45, family history, current cigarette smoking, high blood pressure, low HDL. So majority of our patients who undergo bypass or coronary angioplasty will fall into this category. Majority, at least 70%. Because they do have smoking. Majority of Indians are, have smoking history or tobacco use. They have high blood pressure. They have low HDL level. So they will go into this and from this they will go to extreme high risk category. Extreme high risk category A is CAD with more than one feature of high risk group. Yes. Not too much discuss about this, but this numbers will change accordingly. Then about numbers, what should be the LDL target? If you look at the guidelines evolution, in 1988, first guideline came, that is ATP1, which gave us the goal of LDL of 130. Then goal has been changed. 1993 by ATP 200, 2001 remained same, 100, 2004 ATP 3 update, optimal goal has been changed to 70, ideal goal remained same, less than 100. ACCHA 2006, reasonable goal remained same, less than 70 and overall goal less than 100. This remained same for quite some time. And Till it was changed by EAC in 2019. 2019 EAC gave first time that LDL should be less than 55 for very high risk patients. For high risk patients, goal is less than 70 and moderate risk, goal is less than 100. So this less than 55 has been changed in 2019 only. Till that time, goal was less than 70. For quite some time, it was less than 70. Now it is 55. This is again for very high risk patient. High risk patient, it remains same. So by doing this, I mean, how many percentage of patients they have the guidelines? I am coming on to that. Well, that is defined by number 18. 55 percent, 55 and then go to it. Is that is that that is I am coming, why it was taken as 50 only? Why not 40, why not 60, why not 70? So, it, there is also a reason for why to select less than 50 percent LDL reduction. So, treatment target given by ESC 2019, what we are commonly following since last 5 years. BP should be less than 140 by 90, that was given by all guidelines, majority of guidelines. HD, HD1C should be less than 7. LDL should be less than 55, 70, 100, 160 for very high risk, high risk, moderate risk and low risk groups. Secondary target. Non HDL cholesterol should be less than 85, less than 100, less than 130. FOB, tertiary target, should be less than 65, less than 80, less than 100. Triglycerides, no goal was given, but it should be maintained below 150. So, this number need to be remembered. At least LDL less than 55, less than 70, less than 100, less than 160. So, what is seen from previous guidelines? 2016, the number is reduced. If we compare this with Indian guidelines, which was given in 2016, three years earlier, two years ago, Indian guideline in 2016 said LDL should be less than 50 for very high risk group, less than 70 for high risk, for moderate and low risk, it should be less than 100. Updating in 2020, this target remains same 50, 70, 100, 100. Additional target has been given for extreme high risk group, LDL should be less than 30 and non-HDL should be less than 60. 
one guideline does mention that non hdl cholesterol should be maintained within 30 of total ldl so if your total ldl is 50 non hdl should be somewhere around 80 or less than it apob additional goal was given by again lipid association of india also and it should be less than 80 to less than 50 this is tertiary european guidelines 2019 Had also similar things. A C B D who experiences second vascular event within two years, not necessarily same. Coronary artery disease is followed by stroke. Coronary artery disease followed by peripheral artery disease, or stroke followed by coronary artery disease. <coughs> Should be given target of LDL less than 40. So this is again similar extreme risk where we should target even lesser amount of cholesterol. Now, recommendation and level will be very strong. Yes. Now, are there any side effects of lowering cholesterol to certain extent below 50 or below 30? Necessarily not, because many data found that neonat at birth have LDL level of 30. So up to 30 it should be fine. Although there are some articles that mention that low LDL can have hemorrhagic stroke, they can have cataract formation, they can have onset of new onset diabetes mellitus type 2. But these are all associations. There are no causal association found in between this LDL lowering and these side effects. If you look at this Fourier and OBC trial of PCSK9, LDL has gone down up to one millimole per liter, that is nearly around 30. And there are no any major side effects found with this low amount of cholesterol. So common message from all these guidelines: LDL is primary target. Lower LDL is better. All FSS 50% or more lowering of LDL cholesterol and also identify specific value of LDL for further actions. All recommends using some scoring system for risk assessment. Now, why target set at 50%? When target was set at 20% to reduce LDL cholesterol from baseline, number needed to treat was 63. It indirectly means we need to treat 63 patients at this level to prevent more atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease mortality. And when we treat 26 patients and target 50% reduction, the number needed to treat goes down to 26. So we need to treat 26 patients to prevent one death or one event in a year. This next. If we go further down, 30%, this will go even down. Number needed to treat. But then again, as per American guidelines, we need to look for the financial burden to the health system also. So. That's why this number was kept at 50 percent. So here the number needed to treat is 26, which is reasonable. How to treat? First, first, first is non-pharmacology, not for secondary risk, for primary risk. Non-pharmacological, all guidelines is no exposure to topic in any form. Healthy diet, which is low in saturated fat, focus on whole grain products, vegetable, fruits, and fish. 3.5 to 7 hours of moderate vigorous activity per week or 30 to 60 minutes most of the days. BMI should be maintained between 20 to 25, and breast cover should be less than 49, uh, sorry 94 for male and less than 80 for women. I am not going into dietary details because that is another lecture for se. So let's move on to pharmacological treatment. First line of drug is statin. All guidelines. Age old. Second line of drug is azithromycin. Third, PCS. Other drugs which are not there in guidelines till now is benzodiazepine, inclusive, and other new drugs. First line of drug is statin. Target is to reduce goal by 50% reduction of LDL or 40% reduction of non-HDL. There are many drug interactions with statin. Myositis is more common when it is given with amiodarone or dimethyl. Amlodipine, clarithromycin, ticagrelor, and cyclosporin increases atherosclerotic concentration. So it may happen sometimes when patient is co-prescribed amlodipine, the desired effect of atherosclerotic increases and LDL number goes further down. Temporary result is suggested with azolantinomides. This is a major interaction. There are multiple minor interactions also. One important point to discuss is what is taking in terms of this. So, statin intravenous is present, present of clinically significant adverse event, 
that represents unacceptable risk to patient or that may reduce compliance with them. Increase CKMB level, in CKMM level or leg pains or myalgia, myositis makes patient into this statin intolerant too. Should we label it statin intolerant when patient present goes with leg pains? No. We should demonstrate that symptoms or signs resolutes on stopping of statin and it reappears on recheck. Then only we can say that patient is statin intolerant. Genuine statin intolerance is less common. Nocebo effect, that is opposite of placebo effect. Patient believes that this tablet is going to give me some side effects and then it will give. For statin reluctance, when you have discussed in detail about statin side effect, patient is not ready to take statin and they will keep on complaining of leg pains, muscular pain. So that is more common with statin. What is treatment? Treatment is to stop statin. There are no other drugs recommended. Coenzyme Q, omega-3 fatty acid, nicotinic acid not to be given routinely and it is not going to help. If patient actually statin intolerant, what is recommended is to go to directly second line drugs that is acetaminophen. This is a chart given by majority of guidelines, ESC, Liquid Association of India, ECCHA. First line of drug is statin, second line of drug is acetaminophen, third line of drug is PCSK9. And then further refer to lipid drugs. Bile acid sequestrant may be given, it is class 2B indication for patients who are not achieving targets way on statins. It may be given, but again it is class 2B indication. It is not class 1 or class 2A. Why need for other drugs? Because 80% of patients with very high CBD risk are unable to reach LDL goals. Particularly when we have gone down the goal to 55, 30, they will not able to achieve on statin. 9.5% of patients are intolerant to statins. For this is European data, not Indian data as such. So these are second line therapies, and this is where our PCSK9 will come into role. Again, we will go to intestine. Intestinal absorption can be prevented by NPC1 and receptor inhibitors that is azetamin. Bile acid sequestrants can again inhibit absorption of cholesterol from intestine. Lomitapide again inhibit formation of chylomicrons. So these are newer drugs. Benfordwick acid works one step ahead of statins in cholesterol synthesis pathway. And that is specifically to deliver this enzyme, BCA1, is led in muscles. So, benfordwick acid does not have any muscular related side effects as we are having split statins. So, benfordwick acid again is a new molecule. That mipomersin, it prevents ApoB100 MRI. So, ApoB100 is not formed in liver. So, mipomersin is again new drug. Inclicirin. Acts one step ahead of PCSK9 inhibitor. It prevents PCSK9 MRM translation. So PCSK9 does not form. So and then this is PCSK9 inhibitor. One more new monoclonal antibody is angiopoietin like receptor 3 inhibitor, is NCPLD3 inhibitor that acts on lipoprotein lipase. How lipoprotein lipase inhibition can help us? Because lipoprotein lipase degrades. Intermediate low, uh, very low density lipoprotein to intermediate low density lipoprotein and it also acts from chylomicron to chylomicron remnant. Once chylomicron remnants are not formed, it will not be taken up by the liver. This chylomicron can be excreted via urine as well as the uh, liver as the liver also. And when chylomicron uh, lipoprotein like this does not give free fatty acids, it is mostly utilized by tissues for energy generation. So, the chylomicron must go through stools then? Must go through stools. Yes. And this is PCSK9 mechanism. What is PCSK9? PCSK9 basically is a protein which binds with LDL receptor. This LDL receptor with PCSK9 in turn binds with LDL, extra amount of LDL in the blood. This whole complex is internalized and degraded into microstructure. By doing this, even LDL receptor is degraded. So once LDL receptor goes down, LDL is not taken up by the liver. LDL will increase. So if we can increase this, uh, we, if we can inhibit this PCSK9, LDL receptor can be saved. 
So this remaining LDL receptor can again come back to the surface, can again bind to another LDL. And this is how PCS can inhibitor acts, and this is how inclusin acts. Inclusin totally stops the formation of PCS. PCS can inhibitor inhibits PCS can, which is already formed. So both are possible. PCS can inhibitors. I do approved as of now. Any lokima, ego lokima, both is to be given in subcutaneous injections every two weekly or four weekly, depending on the dose. There are no major side effects, fortunately. There are some flu-like symptoms, injection side reactions or back pain. Pemphidoic acid it acts one step ahead of HNG coerated inhibitors that is taking in statin or uh, in cholesterol formation pathway. This enzymes. ACL1, it is absent in muscle, and that's why it does not have any skeletal muscle related side effects. But there are side effects with pemphidoic acid also. Pemphidoic acid makes patient prone for hyperuricemia, and we need to be vigilant in patients who are already getting down. It also makes patient prone for tendon rupture, especially in patients who are elderly, who are taking corticosteroids or fluoroquinolones, who are having renal failure. That need to be kept in mind. There are two side effects: one is hyperuricemia, one is tendon rupture. And again, pregnancy and breastfeeding data are not available. It should not be given with simvastatin, paracetamol. Fortunately, we don't do simvastatin or paracetamol as well. There are multiple trials, which I am not going into detail. Only one trial we will discuss, that is clear outcome trial. This is a trial which, which I am not going into detail, that showed us that. Pemphidoic acid reduces LDL cholesterol by nearly 20 percent, but clear outcome told us that there is 13 percent relative risk reduction in composite mass rate at the end of 40 months with treatment with pemphidoic acid. So yes, it is effective and it gives us clinical benefit also. Inclusin is small inhibitor in the RNA against PCSK9 protein, prevent formation of PCSK9 inhibitors. PCSK9 protein and there is decrease of LDL cholesterol by 50 to 55 percent. Clinical outcome there are no trials yet for inclusion. There were OEN 10 and OEN 11 data which just tested that inclusion can reduce LDL cholesterol but does this reduction in LDL cholesterol translate into clinical outcome, uh, outcome benefit that will be given us by OEM 4 design and that is supposed to be ended in 2024. But yes, this drug has been approved by US FDA as of now for patients with familial hypercholesterolemia and patients with very high risk secondary prevention. Even acuma, that is angiopoietin like protein 3 inhibitors, it inhibits lipoprotein lipase, and by doing this, it inhibits hydrolysis of triglyceride which lipoprotein into free fatty acids, and so that it increases plasma triglyceride and LDL level. This LDL can be again taken up by liver. And it can be delivered. But again, this is in phase 3 trial, clinical data not yet available. The route of administration is intravenous, dose 50 mg per kilogram every 4 weekly. Approved by not US FDA, but in US uh, insurance system is approved for certain cases. Eco Sapenta Lithal or Fish Oil. There is some work for. No, it is there. It is there. US FDA is approved. Now, when the US insurance is not approved, then it is possible that nothing. It is approved in certain cases, like two, three cases, it has been approved. Not much. Special cases, not much. Not routine. Which are those special cases? Family has had cholesterol. They are more. What is their more? More family has had cholesterol. They are more into genetic testing and they are more into familial hypercholesterol. At least familial, homozygous, familial hypercholesterol. Yes. US FDA approved HSA. HSA, but it's not given in the literature. Otherwise, insurance will never ever be. Okay, I'll find out. But it's not given in the literature. I'll find it out. Thank you. Then, this is Ecosapental Ethyl. There is some minor role has been given in class 2 indication. It is to be given only for patients with fasting triglyceride of more than 150 which cannot be controlled with statin or other therapies. Now statin do reduce triglycerides. As it is very less effect on triglycerides. Pemphidoic acid no effect on triglycerides. PCSK9 do reduce triglycerides. 
this is another drug where we can give but dose is 2 gram twice a day as per reduced trial there is only one trial for this not cost effective for primary prevention and there is no place for monotherapy it has to be given in combination with statin side effects are bleeding tendency losing atrial fat or costumes and these are newer drugs Nipomersin, it targets ApoB mRNA prevents formation of ApoB level Lomitapide inhibits microsomal FPP which is necessary for triglyceride 2 ApoB conversion and assembly of VLDA so VLDA is not formed and VLDA will be reduced not appropriate Thalicarsin again an investigational molecule in phase 3 trial it decreases lipoprotein little Molenosaurins again it decreases circulating triglycerides this all are in phase 2 or 3 trial as of now all these are same any drugs work on FOB? sorry any drugs work on FOB? BCS chemical as of now approved drug only BCS chemical then this is Lerodalsin which inhibits PCSK9 engineering and uh, editing very new or very primitive phase PCSK9 vaccine which will avoid PCSK9 formation <coughs> if at all oral PCSK9 is also going on and then phase 3 trial started in late 2020 now it has started already maybe data will be available by 2025 but again it will also be costly now there are some 5 or 6 questions and then we will end this session Do we need fasting lipid profile? Absolutely no The difference between non-fasting triglyceride and fasting triglyceride is very less and there is no clinical significance of this difference but yes if triglyceride is more than 900 fasting circle must no, uh, If triglyceride is more than 400 then you need to check fasting Ok, maybe in some other guidelines This is ACCH This is ACCH Ok, okay. <laughs> check it out but maybe I have a if, you have fast, if fasting gives you more than 400, don't rely on this thing and do yes. all. But for say we don't need fasting samples. Ah, that we need to convey to lab because lab will always send us sample back. This is not fasting. That we need to, even my lab also sent me. So we need to convey. That we need non fasting. Like so non fasting. Clarification a non fasting gives you more than 400 abuoid, then we can in fasting. Too. Okay. And then decide. When to recheck lipid profile or liver enzymes? Nice 2023 update, but it remains more or less same. Baseline, we need to check everything. Lipid profile, SCOD, SCPT for primary, secondary prevention, both. After 3 months, we need to check all. 6 to 9 months, if less than 40% non SDL reduction, now they are taking non SDL reduction rather than LDL. If we are considering LDL, it has to be less than 50% reduction. Then up titrate. After up titrating, every 3 months we need to check. Whenever you change the dose, after 3 months you need to recheck liquid profile. SCOT, SCPT level also. And once the goal is achieved, only liquid profile to be checked yearly, then SCOT, SCPT will not be checked. So in which condition you will target non HDLC and you will not target LDLC? When LDLC is low and this risk is on higher citation develops is. So if your TG is fasting TGs are more than 500, then your target is non HDLC. You will not be a focus. Then LDL does not give us a value. That is this guidance. When FOB comes into the shape. She will have been also different. 12 months and a year. Same. There is that. 3 years later. Just in 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 3 years later. What if SCPT becomes elevated? If SCPT is less than 3 times upper limit of normal, we can continue with that. Again, recheck is necessary in that case at 4 to 6 weeks. If SCPT is more than 3 times upper limit of normal, stop lipid lowering therapy or reduce the dose, recheck in 4 to 6 weeks, con uh, and cautious reintroduction of therapy. Or switch to hydrophilic statin instead of lipophilic statin. Now, what is hydrophilic statin is it is theoretically possible that rosuvastatin is being a hydrophilic liquid and being excreted in urine and liver both it can be given in liver dysfunction also but by saying this it is hydrophilic we do mean theoretically that it does not have any effect on inflammation which is not there 
or data say it as that rhodopastatin is as equally effective as atorvastatin. So, what we can say hydrophilic uh, statin, rhodopastatin, theoretically yes, it can be given in patient with liver dysfunction also whenever SCOT is able to more than 3 times of a limit of normal. But practically, we need to again recheck SCBT. If it remains elevated, check for the other cause also. That means there is a fitness for an hour. And then SCBT is elevated to attend all those who are speaking. Those who are speaking should be preferred. I have that slide also. That slide is missing. No, that slide is missing. So, there is one small study on that. But they have not concluded anything. Clinically not yet, theoretically yes. How for creatine in kinase to be tested? Before treatment, yes, it needs to be tested. If baseline creatine in kinase is more than four times upper limit of normal, so it was total CT. Yes, total CT. Monitoring is required, routine monitoring is not necessary until another patient develops symptoms of kinase. So this is a chart. You want some muscle symptoms, check creatine in kinase if it is less than four times upper limit of normal. We can continue with therapy. Creating in kinase between 4 to 10 times upper limit of normal. Stop statin for 4 to 6 weeks. Restart with lower dose of alternative statins. If it is more than 10 times upper limit of normal, consider rhabdomyolysis and treat patients for rhabdomyolysis and check for renal dysfunction also. Treatment for hypertrichosis statin. Again, all guidelines. First drug of choice is statin. If it cannot be achieved, ecosap and ethyl can be added to certain reason, but in combination with statin, not alone. In your work, I'm about 20 million dollars. Like 200 net. It's very good. And most of the time, pancreas. When it comes to pancreas, it is more than 400. Yeah, I guess that's why the chances of pancreas. Pancreas, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The figures and sometimes. I'll check it. I'll share it. Fortunately, with control of diabetes, it will come down. 
then diet and exercise will definitely affect first is body. any time diet exercise first is any day for dry days guys then lipoprotein little a this is from liquid association of india lipoprotein little a more than 20 indicates increased risk of acvd in indians 20 to 50 makes it moderate risk and more than 50 is high risk European they have given of more than 180. This is very strict guideline. Indian uh, guidelines are generally more strict. Same unit say, you know, the milligram per day. Same milligram per day. Huge difference. This is same. They say more than 50 it is risk, but more than 180 it is high risk. India more than 50 is high risk. LP is strongly recommended at the time of initial screening of all subject and patient with premature ASCVD. Familial hypercholesterolemia, family history of premature CVD, recurrent ACVD despite optimal liquid lowering treatment. If LDL goal is achieved and LPA is high, PCS9 inhibitor may be used. This is again one discordant group. LDL goal is achieved, LPA is high. Lipid level in children, only one guideline talks about this that is ACCHA 2018. Depending on the age, 0 to 9 year, total cholesterol should be less than 75, 75 to 99 is borderline, more than 100 is abnormal. Triglycerides 90, 90 to 130, more than 100. This is given only in one guidelines. Generally, we don't treat this kind of patient, so we don't concentrate on this. But yes, this is given by ACCHA 2018. Ah, this is the slide, atorvastatin or rosuvastatin. Lipophilic statins are rosuvastatin, sorry, lipophilic statin. And there are some superior cardiovascular outcome, theoretically more biopathic side effects but not confirmed. While hydrophilic statins like rosuvastatin, pravastatin theoretically less side effects but less pleiotropic effect also, all theoretical. Only one or two articles are there regarding this. One more statin is that is called pitavastatin. Pitavastatin, again what is that? It is lipophilic group. Ah. Lipophilic group. Except for our statin, Rufo statin, all will come in like this. So, highest dose of beta was okay, statin is maximum moderate intensity statin. Yes. So what it is that? Highest dose of beta was statin, which is 4 mg per day, it is the moderate intensity statin. So, that is our high risk group, but we have to beta was statin. But the primary prevention is the moderate intensity, no dose, so that is beta was statin. High intensity is only 2. Other was statin, 80 mg. One guideline says 40 also. Rufo was statin, 40 mg. My point is that in a intolerant state in patient, it was statin like can give other. it was statin. Yes, yes, it can give other statin. After discontinuation, you can start with other statins. So, where yes. I am using Tamaru 20 to 40 watt dose of patient and mental and physical side effect, fine, and the beta of 4 up and then the bow much higher. Like 4 milligrams. 4 milligrams. Highest dose is 4, and there will be a that is opposite to placebo effect. Another side effect of Other side effect which you have not discussed is the cognitive decline. What is yes. the status of cognitive decline with atorvastatin? It's there again with atorvastatin with this low ideal level cognitive decline, hemorrhagic stroke has been discussed, but no association, no correlation. That is it is only association. And this is a chart for hypertriglyceridemia. Yeah? Triglyceride more than 500 or more than 1000. Less than 500, again it is lifestyle intervention, achieve LDL target, achieve non SPL targets. For patients who are having more than 500 or more than 1000, again aggressive lifestyle modification is required. Fibrates or omega 3 fatty acid has some role, but again statin acetamine has to be given to all patients, achieve LDL level first, and then go for this. This was. Right.